the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Into the darkness you rise And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Lord, this is our testimony And my God is greater My God is stronger God, you are higher Awesome in power My God is greater My God is stronger First Corinthians I love Jesus Verse 47, 1 Corinthians 15. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. of the age to come you're changing everything spirit of the sovereign lord would you come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known We the glory of the reason Let the weight of your glory let it cover us Let the light Of your river flow And 
and let this truth of your kingdom reign in us and let this truth of your kingdom reign in us let this truth of your kingdom reign in us let the life of your river flow let the life of revelation flow Let this truth that makes your kingdom reign in us. Let the life that brings glory reign in us. Let the truth that transforms us reign in us. Let the eyes of the Spirit reign in us. Let the light of the Most High breathe on us. Let the sound of power reign in us. Let the weight of your glory let it fall. Shakina glory fall. Shakina glory. Let this truth that makes mighty man reign in us. Let the light that swallows weakness reign in us. Let the light that destroys fear reign in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh Lord, let your glory cover us. Let it cover us. Let it cover us. For where we stand this holy ground. Where thou standest, bow down and worship him. I will worship him. Oh, his presence is here, majesty. Lord, I worship you. I bow down. And worship Him, Lord. We enter in, Lord. We enter in, consuming fire, sweet perfume, truly your awesome presence. It fills this room Consuming fire You're the sweet perfume Your awesome presence Your changing presence Your lifting presence 
your mighty presence your glorious presence mysterious presence your precious presence it fills this room consuming fire sweet perfume I see your awesome presence that's what makes the difference it fills this room so I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name so let the weight of your glory cover us your river flow your river flow let this truth of your kingdom reign in us empower us Let the weight of your glory Kadosh Kadosh Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Koinonia welcomes you, oh God. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. Never get tired of what you are doing. Never get tired of what you are doing. Let the light of your river flow. I 
I've made it true All your kingdom reign in me That the way of your glory Meets the presence of the Father. You bring to our midst the presence of heaven. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, 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 Protectors of His Holiness. Seraphim, 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 seraphim. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy.
I can hear celestial voices Calling from afar The calling from afar Angel voices It's to you alone Holy, holy, it's the only song the angels sing to you alone. You who seated on your throne forever, you will reign. We do these things because this is a place of encounter. This is the protocol of an encounter. When you invoke his presence in worship, then he comes. Lord Jesus, thank you. May the name of the Lord forever be lifted in this place. May religion never ever replace your presence in this place. May this place remain a place of encounter. Encounter with the Spirit of God. Encounter with the precepts of the kingdom. Encounter with the powers of the age to come. Strengthen us, O oh God, by the spirit of revelation. Let the vistas of the heavens be open as we explore the mysteries of the kingdom. Make us strong. May we be the ones that know their God. And may we do exploits. Hallelujah. Just the voices. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Sing hallelujah. and say Lord my eyes will see and my heart will receive pray cry from the depth of your heart open our eyes oh God that we may behold one of first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And also is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 
49. And as we have borne the image, oh hallelujah, as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I'd like us to read verse 49. Read it with understanding. One to read. Please help us with the fun. The Bible says, as we have born, it begins to give us a contrast of inhabitants and beings in this earth. Right? When you read the preceding verses, it says there are different kinds of bodies. Please listen to me. The teaching tonight will bless you. It said there are some bodies that are terrestrial. There are some bodies that are celestial. And all of them are within this territory. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, in the same way, since we have borne the image of the earthly, there is a system in God that can help us manifest experientially the image of the heavenly. And this is what I'm going to be dealing with very briefly tonight. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. Help us, O oh Lord. Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. As we have borne the image of the earthly, so we will bear the image of the heavenly. Verse 10. One to read if you're there. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? Not on earth. Not on earth. Thy will be done in earth. In the same way your will has been done in heaven. In heaven your will has been done. And that's why the fullness of your kingdom find expression. But Lord, let your kingdom find expression in the earth in the same degree in the same dimension and in the same similitude hallelujah tonight i want to share with us something that has helped my life through the years and is still helping my life this for me is one of the keys to carrying very heavy weights of the glory the life the power the beauty of the kingdom upon your life if you will pay attention to what i'm about to teach you in these few minutes and you believe it and you walk in that light then you will find out that first corinthians 15 from verse 49 will become your testimony that here and now you will be a manifestation of a reality that is not obtained in this realm you will walk as though a god on the earth hallelujah Jesus began to talk and he said when you pray let this be part of the content of your prayer our father who resides in the heavens and he says we hallow you revere him come to him with the spirit of reverence and worship and after that let the consummation of your prayer let the core of your prayer be your kingdom come. your influence the atmosphere of heaven the same principle that makes heaven heaven lord let it find expression in the earth not just on the ground but in the earth these mortal bodies of clay let the heavenly let that which has made celestial beings find its way to the earth realm hallelujah and find its way upon the inhabitants of the earth that way your will will be done your kingdom will come your glory will be revealed 
Write this word down, please. Transformation. Transformation. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, not lawlessness, freedom, space. And he said, we all, wherever that place is, certain things happen there. And one of it is that we all, with open face, there is an unveiling. It says, we behold him as though looking at ourselves in a mirror. And then we begin to experience transformation. So we are the image of the earthly. But as we behold the heavenly, there is a transformation that begins to happen. And we begin to look like the heavenly. It says we are changed from glory. One dimension of glory to another. And the name given to that process is transformation. Transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ. Transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ. You can expound on it. Transformation is the process of alignment and conformity. The process, that process of alignment, that process of conformity that makes a man become a manifestation and an expression of the heavenly that makes any man become an expression of Jesus, the very Christ upon the earth. Transformation is the name given to the spiritual process, the spiritual technology, the system by which the earthly becomes the heavenly, the system by which the weak become strong, the system by which the carnal becomes spiritual. It's called transformation. The desire of God, listen, the desire of God is that the fullness of his glory, his glory means his nature, his essence, the fullness of his power, the fullness of his kingdom, his influence, the fullness of his culture, his way of life, invade the earth. And find expression in the earth. Exactly the way. It finds expression in heaven. That is the heart cry of the father. That the fullness. Of his culture. The fullness. Of his principles. His glory. His power. His wisdom. Find expression in the earth. As it is in the heavens. God is not satisfied just with the beauty and the, the excellence of heaven. He wants to birth that same experience. That was the idea behind the formation of Eden. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his character. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his excellence. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of him. That's why he gave his exact dominion to man. Not an inferior type. His very dominion. Gave it to man. And it still is his desire. That his fullness. Will find expression. If that happens in the earth. Then we will see the harvest of souls. Then we will see transformation and revival. Across individuals and territories. Then we will see the systems and the kingdoms of this world becoming experientially the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Then the ultimate plan of God will be fulfilled. That all things be headed up in Christ even as he submits to the Father. And so the strategy is that Jesus submits to the Father. And then the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit like a faithful bride submits to the authority of Jesus and then through dominion and a demonstration of the reality of the kingdom 
the church, the battle axe will bring creation under its feet. And then all things according to Colossians becomes headed up in Christ. And he becomes the fullness of all things. This is the eternal plan of God. But for that to happen, his kingdom must come. Listen, please, get what I'm saying. His kingdom, his influence, his glory. When that happens, then we will see a reality that is foreign to the earth finding expression. Because there are vessels that become containers of that reality. It is at that point we will see the eyes of the blind open by a technology that medicine cannot explain. It is at that point we will see men walk like gods upon the earth right when they saw the apostles they called them zeus and hermes greek gods because they operated laws that defied what man had known and the heart cry of the father is that his kingdom the fullness of his influence the fullness of his power and his glory will find expression until that happens god is still being misrepresented the fullness of who God is will only be understood when his kingdom comes. If the kingdom of God does not show up in his fullness, certain dimensions of God will still remain vague and misunderstood. And that misconception will paint very wrong images about God. Are you following what I'm saying now? So the desire of God is that his kingdom will find expression in the earth. The desire of God is not just to take us to heaven. Please get this. The desire of God is not just for rapture to happen and the Antichrist judged. All those things are part of the processes that will lead to the culmination because he is God and his sovereignty will make his prophecy to come to pass. However, he said, Thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. With you I will beat down nations. And so as it is, we do not yet see all things according to Hebrews under his feet. Are you, are you understanding the teaching tonight? So God wants heaven to find expression. Not just as a song. Not just as a cliche. Not just as a Christian suggestion. Not just as a theological fact. He wants it here and now. Here and now. In this place. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. In this place. Here and now. We let your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. So here and now. In this life. And with this mortal body. He wants the image of the earthly. To experience the foretaste of the glories and the realities that dwell in heaven. But the limitation to that agenda is hidden in this word. Transformation or lack of it. The process by which the earthly becomes the heavenly. The process by which the treasure is transferred in earthen vessels. The treasure by which a celestial body becomes terrestrial. The process by which an ordinary biological being becomes literally a celestial being. When that happens, then we will bring our lives, our families, our territories, and the nations under the submission of the Christ. Listen, listen. What I am telling you is the reason why you are alive right now. If nobody has taught you this, then I want you to know that you do not even understand what we call Christianity or what we call the faith life. It is our participation in bringing this agenda to pass. Are we following now? And there is a way God wants to achieve this. I've taught it under the message, the emergence. You can get part three, but I just recap on it before we go to the main discussion tonight. 
I told you that there is a spiritual strategy to which cosmos will be subdued and will come under the governing influence of the king. The name of that strategy is the church. The church is not the coming together of people. Not just that. The church is not just a local assembly. The church is the name of the only spiritual strategy that is capable of birthing the purposes of God in its fullness. And so he says, Thou art Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. And he says, Upon this rock, I will lift that strategy, that ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail. So the church is God's only chance and hope. Not because he is not mighty, he has chosen through his predeterminate counsel that it is only through the church that the multifaceted wisdom of the Christ will find expression. And so the agenda of the, of the Father is at the mercy of the understanding and the participation of the church. It's not at the mercy of the might of God. It's not at the mercy of the sovereignty of God. It's at the mercy of the equipping and the participation of the church. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the equipping that they enlighten the saints, that they build up the saints, that they orient the saints, that they, they become instruments of birthing transformation in the saints so that the saints now transform will do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Giving God space to find expression in the earth. This is what ministry is all about. Hallelujah. So the spirit of religion is the operation of darkness that masquerades itself as light. And rather than exposing the people to the light of God that equips them and prepares them as an army, it gives them a form of godliness. But the, the capacity, the power in it to birth that transformation is not there. So for such people, their testimony is ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So they learn. They have devotionals. Right? There's all kinds of Bible studies and prayer. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there are church services. However, those activities have been shrouded in religion. And so it does not sustain the ability to break out the light of God in them. And so after many years of being in church, after many years of being an elder, being a deacon, being a pastor, after many years of a church existing, that desire of God is unable to find expression because the average believer does not even know why they come to church. They come to church as a way of satisfying guilt. They come to church as a way of, of trying to dance to status quo so that they can avoid the embarrassment of being told they are carnal. But it's much more than that. There is a heart cry. And those who will carry out this heart cry are the ones who become unkillable. They are the ones who the Bible talks about them. It says for them, those people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake saying, don't touch these ones. It is for those kind of people that God would rather a nation die than for something to happen to them. They are the ones who are granted access to taste of the powers of the age to come. Realities that are not apportioned for our dispensation. But on the strength of their yieldedness, they can touch into certain things. This is what happened to David. It was not given to him to see the coronation of Jesus. It was not in his dispensation. But his loyalty and allegiance and alignment opened him up to the mysteries of the spirit and he peeped into the coronation and he said the Lord said to my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool the prophet Isaiah was not supposed to see the outpouring of the spirit that Joel would prophesy about but because of his alignment he tasted of 
an ability and a dimension that was not made for his dispensation and he saw in a vision with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise me wherein i have said this is the rest and the refreshing it was joel that began to prophesy all of these prophets bits and pieces of their revelation into that ultimate agenda and here we stand today the prophesied generation here we stand today the generation that all the prophets have spoken about while they stood here they saw you in the loins of prophecy and here we are majorly wasting our time and wallowing in the in the futility of religion unable to partner with the holy spirit to exert any tangible force in the spirit as far as advancing his agenda is we are caught up in the web of religion pastor apostle prophet caught up in the religion of meetings and conventions and conferences organizing ourselves and organizing god and his agenda out of our program but jesus said this jesus himself not a prophet he said your desire should be to participate in any way to see his kingdom come meaning if you are alive today hearing the sound of my voice and there is no active contribution from your life in birthing this agenda you do not deserve to live for he said i shall not die he didn't say live to roam around wallowing in religion he said i shall not die but live to declare is god speaking to us and so the way he will achieve this agenda is through the church God wants to do this by revealing himself. Listen. The way that the agenda of God will find expression is when his glory is revealed first in this earthen vessel and then through this earthen vessel to the entire territory of human race. So the agenda is twofold. The manifestation of it. First, to you, the battle acts. He wants you to experience his glory for yourself in your life. That your life becomes an expression of his beauty and glory. That your life becomes a validation to the fact that the kingdom is true. And that the power of God exists. And then out of that experience, you begin to dispense the grace and the glory and the anointing and the power. From your personal testimony as a contribution of your quota to see his kingdom come. Are we learning something? Say after me, God desires that my life will host his presence. God desires that my life, my body, my spirit will host his power. God desires that I become an expression of the reality of God's ability here and now. God desires that I become an expression of heaven and everything it carries here and now. That's God's desire for you. God's desire is bigger than giving you a wife. Don't reduce God. God's desire is bigger than giving you a jeep. The devil can give you a jeep. God's desire is bigger than giving you crowds and giving you a church and giving you anointing. God's desire is that the fullness of himself he wants you to become a conduit of his glory a conduit of his wisdom that word dogza the full representation of all that is obtainable in him as far as our dispensation is given and defined by he wants it to find expression so the limitation of the agenda of god is the limitation of the ability of the saints to be transformed and not the limitation of his might the inability of the saints to contend for transformation has misrepresented god in the earth this is the tragedy in the earth right now he wants to reveal his wisdom and his glory and his power in your life first and then through your life please don't make that mistake to just think he just wants to reveal his glory through you no he wants to reveal himself in you then through you in you then through you in you then through you there are two 
limitations that the Bible reveals to us. Two limitations that can frustrate the church from achieving this. There are two limitations that the Bible points to us. That as much as we say we love God, there are two limitations that will stop us from ultimately satisfying the desire of the Father. Number one, the first limitation is what the Bible calls the gates of hell. The gates of hell. Matthew 16 verse 18. The gates of hell. The first limitation that the Bible openly points out to us. That will be a challenge. It will be a standard that will attempt to resist this agenda. The gates of hell. He said and I say unto thee thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell. Not demons, not principalities. The gates, the fullness of the arsenal of hell. What is the gates of hell? It means Satan and all the arsenals and the strategies that he has. Satan and all the arsenals and strategies that he has. In an attempt to fight the advancement of the kingdom. That's what is called the gate of hell. The gate of hell represents Satan. And all his gimmicks. Comes from the Greek word stratomai. It says do not be unaware of the devices. That word is stratomai. The strategies. The skills. The arsenals of Satan. There is a formula he uses for deception. There is a formula he uses for witchcraft. There is a formula he uses those formulas are like secret codes they are also called mysteries that is the principle with which he has brought nations for instance the bible tells us that satan uses the spirit of fear to put people in captivity he says and to deliver them through through fear have all their lifetime be subject to bondage so the spiritual strategy to bring bondage is fear and like job what you fear now becomes your lot are you getting me so the bible says the gates of hell will rise you want to get a job there is a spiritual formula to frustrate you it is part of the arsenals of the gate of hell you want to get married there is a spiritual formula because your marriage has a root to bringing this agenda to pass since that there is a prophet that your womb should produce and satan will fight it it's not about you coming from east or west it's about something when he said the seed the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent satan started looking for everybody that looks like the seed he's still searching today hallelujah and he will use everything everything he will use everything your sensory perceptions your financial condition your family situation your academic condition every strategy satan is desperate more desperate than you can ever imagine to see that the agenda of god does not come let me tell you those who trivialize the reality of satan and his plot to fight to death the agenda of god are joking jesus himself said there will only be one limitation to the building of the church the gates of hell the spirit of religion came from satan activity without power came from satan because when the nation of israel in egypt wanted their exodus the moment they told moses we want to go moses told a m um, pharaoh what did pharaoh say occupy them is because they are free start giving them activities let them have meetings upon meetings seminars upon seminars and then they get busy and it convinces them that activity is equal to spirituality. Is God speaking to us tonight? Hallelujah. The gates of hell. They will haunt you. I guarantee you. When Jesus went to fast, Satan followed him and stood somewhere watching jesus praying listening to his prayer points as he communicated with heaven for 40 days satan was nowhere else in the world roaming around he was waiting because it was a it was a a, a a defining moment for jesus as soon as jesus was done here comes satan his strategy again if you are really the son of god 
turned these stones to bread. And he took him up a cliff and so on and so forth. And the Bible says when Jesus overcame him, what did he do? He left him for a season. Is it in your Bible? He left him forever. Make no mistakes that because you think you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, the devil will cross his leg and say, wow, promise. So you are going to have a great ministry in the future. Well done. You are a new creation in Christ. You are joking. You are joking. Hallelujah. The gates of hell. They will rise. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. The gates of hell will rise. You are a brother. You love God. The gates of hell will rise through different strategies. Hallelujah. Look at Samson. The gates of hell rose up. He was just moving and one demon entered a lion. And the lion came to feed. You think the lion just, he was just strolling around and he said, lion, let's, let's try wrestling. You think that's what was happening to Samson? Because Satan was trying everywhere to find out about his strength. So he used the strongest of the beasts. And a lion came and Samson tore it into pieces. And Satan said, it's not there. Strategy change. He used the Philistines. They caught him. Right? And he, he used the jawbone of an ass. Satan said, I missed it again. Another strategy. Delilah. If I've used physical strength, let me use emotional strength. Where is that beautiful Delilah? And Delilah came. And Satan saw how vulnerable Samson was. He said, we are making progress. We are making progress. He, he, Delilah insisted. And when she cut off his hair, the judge of Israel had been brought to his knees. Hell began to celebrate. The gates of hell prevailing. Samson's eyes were plucked off. Samson's hair was cut off. And I can imagine God saying, come on, Samson, you gave it cheap to Delilah. You would have asked me for a wife. I would have given you a wife. And Delilah ran away. But then what they did not know is that there is still a package in God to restore. Listen. God said, Samson, I know you have blown it. Your Lord now is dead. But you would, you would die in victory. Let all the people that represent evil in that land gather in one auditorium and the strength will be restored. And Samson said, Oh Lord, I know I've sinned against you. The, the Lord you have given me for my generation as a judge, I allowed a woman sleeping with Delilah. That's what some of you are doing as you are looking at me and laughing as if it does not matter. You carry your death. You are insulting Esau for taking porridge. And some of us have done what is cheaper than taking porridge. When you know what is upon your shoulder, you will package yourself and warn yourself from the spirit. Samson made Israel to suffer just because the strength and the salvation of Israel was upon him as a judge. But then, you will not say he didn't fulfill his assignment because he pushed. He said, oh God, let me die with them. And while he pushed, the Bible says he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime. Imagine the mass burial of evil. All the evil men gathered together with their idol and he crushed them into pieces and died with them. Every man that showed up was given a piece of this assignment and they ran with it. They didn't do it part time. They spent their life doing it. When Jezebel was threatening the prophets of God, Elijah the Tishbite arose, a fiery prophet who frustrated the counsel of darkness and left. And now, probably in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, who knows, one woman was crying in slave trade and said, Oh Lord, I may die, but let this little child of mine exalt your name and that person became your ancestor became your grandfather became your father and now it is you that woman's prayer who died in the slave trade that lord i saw a vision that africa must be saved that's you sitting down roaming around and god is saying do you not know you are a manifestation of prophecy 
how we limit him how we limit him the gates of hell first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 let's hurry up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain break every chain listen wherefore we would have come to you even i paul but once again the gates of hell satan personally took it as a responsibility satan told all the demons stand this paul i've noticed this guy is i mean this guy is just winning souls and expanding and enlarging the territories of the kingdom i will hinder him by myself listen when you see people being challenged and confronted shut your mouth is because they have many of you have not received any confrontation you think it's just because you are in christ is because you have not done anything striking enough at least start praying pray to a point that it generates fire and see what happens that's the night somebody will appear to you and say let me warn you your father obeyed us your mother obeyed us take care and leave you wake up in the morning and say what happened i'm praying and i'm seeing somebody appear and you think he's backsliding is because fire did something in the spirit the gates of hell let me tell you there are giants in every mountain don't let any man fool you mm. i pity any man of god that wants ministry wants crowd wants miracle and will not pray you are roaming around doing geo or doing president you will die like a chicken i tell you see let me tell you though if you know how desperate satan is to destroy your life satan does not mind if you die after koinonia on your way going that's when you will appreciate the mercy and the grace of god because for one month now you have not prayed some of you and you have traveled and gone everywhere and yet nothing happened just a guy it's just because i'm in christ ay, 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 ay. a lady prayed in the night brothers and sisters prayed in the night physically in the morning her uncle called her and said what did you do her physical uncle alive what did you do he said be careful you don't know who you are trying let me tell you gates will not open like that you want to bring breakthrough you want barrenness to stop in your family you want oppression to stop the cause of poverty to stop all this all this tea christianity will only the devil will encourage you to keep doing it but let fire burn upon the altar and you watch reactions from the gate of hell oh yes i tell you reaction from the gate of hell is not a sign that the victory of jesus is not there it's a sign that something you are doing is striking a chord how many of you have finished praying and you find out that your loved ones die insulting you and there is fight in the house it's when you finish praying the day you don't pray there's joy and peace and love even somebody who doesn't like you just loves you but you take out time and blast in tongues for two hours non-stop as you step out they say look i've been warning you and you are saying what did i do it's not the person the gates of hell attempting to stop you you tell that man no i won't sleep with you i'm going somewhere and see what happens that's the day somebody will come and tell you we don't do it like this in nigeria better bend or become a fool and you sit down and say truly satan is threatened by every communication of zeal towards your destiny i know what cares satan i found out early in life the moment you say i am taking a step i tell you satan fears you 
is not everybody satan is afraid of there are men who have determined when you worship god and you say lord in life and in death satan says what do i do with this person whether you pray or not things are working well i guarantee you it's because somebody somewhere is praying for you a day will come god will wake and say mr man there are still other sinners getting born again your tenure of of cheap playing christianity has been expired i said it doesn't really matter oh god i thank you i love you you're my king you died you've done everything you will you will waste like a chicken especially take what i'm saying serious i'm not playing games there is the gate of hell it will meet you on the road to your job it will meet you when you are about to give birth one of our ladies just put to bed Annie worshipped him bouncing baby boy hallelujah at a point they were talking stories here and there and she said she had a dream and she saw me I thank God for using my face as a communication of victory and seriousness in the spirit no, I say it with, with all humor. If you see me in your dream, before this, hear what I'm saying, before you carry newspaper around and say, you are, you are programming all of that. Let me tell you, some of you are not serious with your destiny. Even you, you know you are not serious. That's why the gate of hell will pass you. You say, Look, what of me? They say, no, 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 you are not an issue. There is somebody we are looking for. Listen, may your life not be so cold that the gate of hell ignores you you would think it's spiritual growth but it's a sign of being so inert in the spirit you are not striking any chord when the devil wants to destroy your parents he comes freely no resistance whatsoever you snore in demons come in do what they do and they, and they, they come out and you wake up I refuse my life to be like that for as long as I am alive the devil will know that I love the Lord and I will stake my life to see his kingdom come are you getting what I'm saying do you know there are some of you the covering of your prayer that is keeping your family make no mistakes about it they are criticizing you and you don't know why it's a reaction don't stop that's the time to stay after they do all of that you find a corner Ay, 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 ay. you know how kings reign come on you know how they reign you don't stand outside behaving like a fool you lock yourself fire is rising everywhere in the spirit and the gates of hell are saying here he comes again may they know your name he said Jesus I know Paul I know Joshua Selman I know they will know you and know your tongues once they hear it they say here he comes tongues that have grown with pain tongues that have grown with sacrifice the gates of hell will fight anything they can fight in your life please be aware of it you may be as beautiful as the sun you will watch men pass you like this that's when it will occur to you that the God of this world can blind people's eyes hallelujah one day in my life fridge fell on my head the devil wanted to destroy my life yet by the mercy of God I've shared with you some of don't think I'm playing games that's why if listen when the devil was doing that he saw the word I'm giving you in, it's not just because of Joshua Selman when they looked at the womb of her that was with child they said they saw two nations not two people there are some of you the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you is what you represent backslide and see how the devil just leaves you and upon this rock If you travel up and down and come back safe it's not luck there is a law of life if you don't know it you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life tomorrow we're going to a bomb show praise the lord to go and invest
obeyed and said fire is fire all the way brothers and sisters mm. so break every chain break every chain may your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory that when you show up come on man katalabakaya look there are some of you the reason why god will insist that you marry somebody is because he's taking himself to that family he packaged himself to you and he's saying go there and you enter that family and you just discern the spiritual atmosphere and see chains that have kept people and say for introduction welcome note Zekete katataba, manta pratosketa, emprotoskete kelepata, zekete lekotopa. Lift up your heads, all the gates. That's introduction. But why has your life not passed this kind of threat to the gates of hell? Hallelujah. Moses threatened the devil when he died Satan took his body his dead body they were fighting over his dead body Satan said he's dead I still want it because if he resurrects I, I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens the dead body of a man Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life But the beautiful part is that Luke 10 19 he said behold see I have given you whether you know how to access it or not is not the issue but I have given you he said behold when the Bible tells you behold it means see conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit it's not just open your eyes and see you are already seeing you are not blind behold man takata yabata I give you I give I confer upon you power to tread upon serpents scorpions and over how many all the powers of the enemy the word power there is the word exousia authority i give it to you joshua selman because you will need it you will never be able to advance koinonia without that power there are gates that will rise there are gates over Zaria. don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because satan was asleep there is a force we know where we do it when the prayer band comes together on tuesday as they lift their voice something is happening and while you are there in your room some chains just break and you say let me go for koinonia today and something wants to keep you but god will say come 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 listen please let me submit to you in all sincerity if your prayer life is dead use this meeting to jack it back to life i'm not playing games this is not an issue of i'm calling to the ministry of prayer nobody's called into any ministry of prayer i say everybody is called into the ministry that will make jesus come the advancement of the kingdom he didn't tell some let me teach you how to pray the rest go fishing he was talking to everybody you see the importance of prayer if you are not told this let me tell you what i'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication if i don't give you a reason to pray you will never pray all these lazy things people do around and let me tell you something a big secret see explore the mystery of night prayers we'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that mystery of night prayers when all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience those people are asleep and you are praying you are just worshiping putting worship like this that's why it's good to be rich create a prayer garden in your house put flowers put the portrait of Jesus remove every nonsense that Nigeria has put in your head and you put it and you wake up in the night you carry your notebook where you are trusting God for direction for the next level you carry your Bible you carry your recorder this is what I do this is what I do I put heavy worship for hours 
and while that is happening I'm lying down flat with notebooks oh Lord this land is opening up God said don't go anywhere stay in one place say thank you Jesus for saving me I would have made a fool out of myself and God says I want to do more son you are limiting me you are limiting me expand your capacity thank God for what you have seen in Koinonia but it's only little and I say Lord supply the grace and that heavy shakina comes Shakatata. I lie down there I sleep and I wake up I sleep and I wake up the body is tired I say sleep there you are not going anywhere that's what you do on your bed you lie down and then you put your phone and you sleep off that is, is a basic level of spiritual growth it's spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness you don't write your exams on your bed and say bring my exam paper no matter what the rain is you get up please are you getting blessed I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us because this is how the great will reign the gates of hell everybody say I have authority when I read this scripture years ago it made me afraid there are two words in this whole thing that makes me fear God not behold not power not all by any means or any means what does by any means mean to you is the part of scripture you understand that will open up when the bible says nothing shall by any means it's a double confirmation so in case anything happens and i didn't pray satan will still not use it as a yardstick because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life by any means whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness that scripture still fortifies me while God is trying to restore me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you only believe in the power, that's what you see. If you believe the by any means part, that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day. You two, you don't know what happened. Right? Never brought light or something. That's the power of God working. Don't, don't just laugh. Come on, you know I will talk to you. right or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without cloud by any means keeping you i want you to realize that you truly have authority now whether you have received it is one thing for me to give you this it's another thing for you to receive it and it is yet another thing to know how to use it are you getting me whether or not you refuse it it does not mean i did not give you he said i give you authority let's hurry up the second limitation that the bible lets us see is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind i want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray the first limitation is the gates of hell satan but the second an even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind the absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of God finding expression now let me explain something very quickly I want to just correct something very very quickly please look up I taught something and we're having a school of ministry and I did a little teaching and I saw the way the students, the thing was just nailing them. And uh, God, they were saying, it's not like I don't agree with you, but let it just settle down. What we call the tripartite nature of man. I want to teach you something. Please look up. People have written books who have never had any encounter with God and have written all kinds of audacious books. Let me have three people. I want to correct something now, please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Just stand face. Me. You stand in the middle. You are wearing white. God bless you. Watch this. Look at this. This is what you have been taught. Now, I'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man. But I want to teach you something that will really liberate you. Otherwise, you will not understand this transformation thing I'm talking about. What I'm going to teach is very powerful now. This is what we have taught people. This is man number one, spirit. 
This is man, same man number two, soul. Is that not true? This is man number three, body. This is what you have taught. The Bible never teaches this one. This is nonsense. That's religion that brought up that. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is true that man is a tripartite being. But the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. It's in the similitude of that. But watch this. This is the part I want to explain to you. What is the soul of man? Look up. If you don't understand this, forget transformation. Forget carrying the power of God and the glory of God. What exactly is the soul of man? It is true that the Bible says that you'll be kept spirit, soul, and body. Right? But what is the soul of man? Is What I'm saying is, can you separate the spirit of man to say, this is spirit. You, this is soul. Stand here. This is body. Can that happen? Look at me. When a man dies, how many objects or entities are separate? Two. Is that not true? Whatever you call it, whether spirit or soul, we're about to find out. But whatever, let's call it X. X comes out and the body is lying down there. Correct? Is that true? We're about to get the name of X now. Listen. <laughs> you say why? No one say why. There's no why in the equation. Are you, are you following what I'm saying now? If you don't understand this, you will be confused. Which part relates to God? Which part should change? Which part goes to heaven? And there is, that's to tell you believers are not even growing. Because if you are growing, you must meet this question on the way. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the soul? Look up. We teach that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Very correct. It's only that we don't think over what we are saying. Joshua Selman. Listen. Joshua Selman is a person. He has a handkerchief. He lives in a room. How many? Assuming this room is a living thing. How many living things do we have? Are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call the soul, please get this. Never forget what I'm about to teach you now. What you call the soul, listen, is the spirit of man, but connected to his will, emotions, and intellect. The will, emotion, and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the Bible says man is a spirit, it is true in that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from God, right? But the spirit like that, if the spirit just comes to the body, there will still not be interaction because of law of territory. Go and get my message, mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught on the law of territory that there must be compatibility in territories. That's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth. They need material bodies. Is that true? Because of the law of territory. So the spirit as it were. Is unable to find expression physical in the body. Until a dividing line. Are you getting what I'm saying now? An attachment. That helps the spirit. To communicate with this container called the body. And that attachment. Is the mind. Composed of your will ability to make decisions so the spirit wills and through the will of man the body executes that will are you getting what i'm saying emotions and then intellect a sense of comprehension so this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain remove the will emotion and the intellect and you don't have a soul again you just have spirit and body are you getting what i'm saying so when you say man is a soul you are right when you say man is a spirit, you are right. But I'm telling you the dynamics of the difference. Because when you get born again, this guy, watch this. When you get born again, in, in his original sense, your spirit man is united with Christ. It experiences the fullness of salvation immediately. Immediately. Oneness. Zoe. Are you getting my point? The Zoe life implanted here but that's the way life has not found expression in this body that's the way life 
has not permeated these faculties that was given to you that is why although you are born again you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke the memory of what you did is still there because this dividing line the will emotion and intellect has not been transformed are you getting what i'm saying so the bible puts it this way first peter chapter 1 verse 9 first peter chapter 1 verse 9 you need to understand this herbalists understand this those who do astral travel right what they call them Harry Krishna or all this world relief they understand this very well it's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught everybody read want to read the word end there is the culmination of your faith receiving the culmination of your faith what is it this is talking to believers what is the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul is when your will your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit the degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with god are you understanding what i'm saying so watch this all authority has been given so we believe the word of god that means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of jesus that means that if the mind of christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially nothing will be impossible for you again because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned are you getting what i'm saying are we following what i'm saying but this is usually the problem watch this all power is here the body is a puppet is ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to are you getting what i'm saying now this is all the power of god but this is the level of access so that power can barely find expression to the body so all that the body executes are you getting what i'm saying is just a little and a fraction of the capacity of what is resident there but because human beings look at the body and so promise now teaches because he used his eyes to read oh sick bodies you can be healed blind you will be healed and your spirit man is saying yes we have the power don't fear but because you do not have that vision of your soul the transformation what makes the earthly heavenly are you getting my message now that very factor i now come to him on wheelchair is it true that all authority has been given yes and i say stand up and he can't stand up he sits back down i say look ginger your faith let's try it again watch this stand up and nothing happens and at the end of it this guy says your jesus is a liar what happened he was misrepresented you just misrepresented jesus christ because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves do you agree with me now i am telling you that god is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation as mighty as he is on the throne he's at the mercy give me space and then while you are struggling a man like benny him comes and he just stands and says holy if you are on a wheelchair stand up stand up and he stands up and he's walking what happened more jesus than you no no there is a greater conformity to the image of the christ that has made him his body now responds in greater measure are you getting what i'm saying so it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again your job is to bring that mind that contains your will emotion and intellect that makes your spirit called a soul right so when we say salvation of the soul you're not really doing anything per se although we generally say spirit man are you getting my point but what we really mean i'm breaking the dynamics for you is that attachment to your spirit man call your will emotion and intellect that is the doorway through which the reality and the glory of god find expression 
because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit your spirit man has been joined to Christ except you don't believe the Bible but that Christ cannot show up on the scene because your mind is a limitation so I come as a preacher and I say in the name of Jesus darkness flee and although the spirit is willing but the flesh becomes weak because the doorway through which the possibilities of God through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak so I look at somebody oppressed and I say in the name of Jesus Christ be free and nothing happens when nothing happens over a long time the devil now comes and says why don't you try me you have tried the rest Jesus being part of the rest and you say truly oh, let's go to the village we have tried man of God I appreciate you I know God is using you mightily but the emergency requires another force to come into attention and the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties see this is the same thing that happens when demons come watch this watch this watch this watch this let me teach you something now watch this a man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the holy spirit seeks to attach himself that's called demon possession are you getting me the will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything this man can be born again demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se but they use the doorways of these faculties so between the spirit and the body there is an interruption are you getting what i'm saying now so he can be born again yet anger is still killing him he can be a man of god yet he still masturbates him and he's praying in tongues genuine tongues real tongues and you are saying kai this man of god is fake no he's not fake something is happening in the soul realm the salvation of his soul has not been perfected so the bible says it this way the weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through god are you seeing now he shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of christ listen so the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it the difference is more alignment more yieldedness more translation so it makes you reflect the heavenly this is what happened to enoch enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime this his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality you see the concept of immortality that many preachers people like kobus great man i love and honor he's gone to be with the lord he caught the revelation of immortality but not the dynamics of its manifestation so he knew from the word of god that if immortality is at work in your life the first thing that happens is you stop aging at once you stop aging that's a sign that immortality is at work but it so happens that immortality is not an impartation the fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body and our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation so god just takes your spirit and your body lies the moment the trumpet shows up the law of immortality is what will make your body that's the law of resurrection that's what makes a seed to arise again are we getting blessed bless you guys I just hope you understood what i said psalm 78 verse 41 please let's rush help us holy spirit holy 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 yeah they turned back and tempted god and what else did they do they what they limited the holy one who are the day mortal men god wanted to step in 
oh israel i want to do mighty things in your midst but the bible says they limited god they limited god a man can limit god brothers and sisters how many times have we limited god in our lives how many times have we limited god in our finances how many times have we limited god in our ministries who told you the dead cannot rise who told you all these things cannot happen there is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man and so every time we engage i'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation listen i will never forget the first day that i was going to experience the anointing of the spirit in my life i've never seen it before never laid hands on anybody i just kept praying and doing all the things that i knew to do and one day there was a lady who came from somewhere and i prayed you know we bought food for her and then she i prayed for her she got born again and i was about to minister the baptism of the holy spirit just by faith and i just laid my hands and it was as if i was dreaming i just saw somebody moving back i had barely touched her and that's how she just went on the floor ah. i said oh god what what is this good news that i'm seeing so be excited when you begin to see don't just be childish about it that's because some of you once you see that you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small so that the anointing will enter fast you now go and look for small small ladies and try to throw them i remember years ago there was a gentleman okay the power of god will touch you now now and the lady is just doing like this but refusing to fall then you put one finger you know fall two fingers you are doing madness the agenda of God is bigger than that thing. God will just let you because at least you are cooperating with him. So just do and let's continue. But it doesn't mean God, you are slowing down your progress. Some of you are doing it, Abby. Praise the Lord. And so from that time, I began to see, I will never forget when I saw one dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think it was our first crusade, Pangshin crusade. We usually have pastor's conference where we have some time with the pastors, teach them. That was in 2006. And then we we'll have like, um, we we'll just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them. So I was in a church and I gave a word of knowledge. When I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually 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 hallelujah let me use medical terms have you seen times when medical people a woman wants to give birth right and they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough is that true is there a baby yes does he want to come out yes why is he not coming out the mother right and sometimes they have to do all kinds of things worse come to worse when nothing is wrong they just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out pray that god will not have to do cs for you for this destiny thing to come out by force as soon as zion travails the bible uses that simile too she will put forth a child so the reason why god is able to do what he's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the spirit over the years we have been able to open a little more so the transformation that has our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the word of god so more of heaven can find expression to our lives but compared to where god wants to take we are still so slow this is why we must continue contending are you getting what i'm saying now that is the reason why we celebrate men of god we don't just celebrate the men we celebrate their sacrifice of giving god space to find expression that's why a man can enter a city and that city will shake not just shake in terms of crowd a lot of even people who will not come for the crusade there's a woman i think one of the few women on earth that i know is alive that carries the presence of god in the order of ketri woman she's still alive till today when that woman is coming for a crusade immediately they spot her car that's how healings and deliverance happen i was shocked i didn't know there's such a person in the earth ah the day i saw that i said my goodness ah this is heaven this is what we're saying 
this woman stepped into the crusade ground and my goodness the kind of miracles i'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not you are just afraid of the pastor so you say yes provable miracle wounds that will close right away not magic right away wounds closing i said my goodness oh god so you still have men and women and ladies do you know you have an advantage over men because of your configuration your configuration was designed in the similitude of the holy spirit you see that that's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the holy spirit let's write a few things a transformed mind i'm defining it now a transformed mind is the mind of christ that's what the bible calls the mind of christ a transformed mind is the mind of christ i'm defining it now it is the mind that has come into agreement it is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of god come into agreement and alignment with the word of god comma and has willfully submitted to the influence of the holy spirit that's a transformed mind so a will emotion and intellect that has come into agreement you no longer conflict the principles of god an alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the holy spirit is what the bible calls the end of your faith the culmination of the work of salvation and this very one transformation is not initial it's not automatic it's not at once it's progressive it takes a while it is over that that the bible says in philippians chapter 2 verse 12 let's look at philippians chapter 2 verse 12 it says walk out your salvation you see it now that's the part he says walk out not just the work of the law not just trying to add something to what jesus has done no work it out the work out there it says wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not in my presence only but now much more in my absence comma work out your what your own salvation as a matter of urgency what is the work there is the name given to your participation your cooperation with the holy spirit in your fasting you are working it out i'll be sharing with us in your prayer and all the points i'm about to give you here you are working it out romans chapter 13 verse 14 the bible gives it an interesting picture it says put on the lord jesus christ where it's like a cloth put on put ye on the lord jesus christ and what by so doing make no provision for the flesh that means there will be space for the flesh until you put on that put on the transformation is like wearing a new garment your possibilities in life through god is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of hallelujah you see why we love and honor the holy spirit write this very quickly the degree of transformation and alignment to god by any man the degree of transformation and alignment to god by any man exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to god by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of god in and through his life that means your degree of alignment to god is the exact measure 
of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life. Not how much you carry, but how much will find expression. So you can carry God as we all believe, but you never see that God show up in your life. In my life, Lord, be glorified. Will you be glorified in my life? Lord, be glorified today. Can you sing that song? Lord, in my life, in my life. Be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. So, what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember, the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church, man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God, there is so much God can do in you. But your disalignment has made him look small. I have made you too small in my mind. A great man that lived a man had died brothers and sisters six months he was dead and saint patrick's came and said where is the grave true story when they showed the grave he signed his signature on it saint patrick he said Diggy, they brought the man out alive in this earth men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods i shared with you about Ancient, I study a lot about revivals. I was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway. There was no money to buy another one. He held it and drew it and completed it. Hi. Transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly. Catherine Kuhlman, she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating she didn't realize she had left the stage apostle babalola for those of you who know the founder of cac that man preached to a point he was levitating and going they held him and brought him back ew kenyon men who allowed the possibilities of god you don't die less than 70 in his church he will raise you back to life one time a man had a, a, an accident a car climbed his legs broke his bones and all ew kenyon did was to look at him because he sees through his eyes and he looked at him allowing heaven to pass through your eyes and the bone started making noise we say it today like mystics but men, the Bible says, men whom the earth is not worthy of. How did they live? Imagine, brothers and sisters, Elijah, he was talking with God on the mountain and they came to interrupt him. He called fire. Your atmosphere opened. Fire came, consumed them, and they went back physically. Daniel entered the lion's den and looked at the lions and smiled joshua told the son to stand still there is something we are missing in our generation and bill johnson got it on the spot he called it the supernatural power of a transformed mind how that heaven wants to find expression do you know how much god can do with koinonia but in my little mind imagine how much i limit him and god says well i will just manage with the little space and see the little things that trickles of his presence that happen during miracle service and some of you are clapping and god is saying i wish i wish 
that's the reason why God transports men from region to region he's transporting himself through them tomorrow we are going to a bomber shop and God is going there through the degree we have given him he expects to do great things but he wants to do more unfortunately Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants so probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die but I may not be able to raise him and I will go there and when they finish people will come with seeds and offering and say you are a powerful man and then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity because there is no passion to press again don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation you'll be a weak Christian compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth they threw Paul took him out of the city and killed him when they killed him they went the other apostles came yeah Paul this is how you have done just shook himself the guys please I will talk to you later on Paul said I am in the straight betwixt I'm standing the line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm that's where I am I'm choosing to go or to stay but I'll stay because it's profitable for you can you imagine a man like that John his mind was so alive they threw him in boiling pot and nothing happened but today when they shoot you you will die at once let me finish up so we'll pray so what then is your assignment what's your challenge write these two scriptures philippians 2 12 and philippians 2 5 that's your assignment let this mind be in you permit this mind 2 verse 5 let this mind koinonia god wants to find expression in zaria god wants to find expression in your family give him space don't limit the mighty one he is mighty but limited mighty but limited mighty but limited through you what is your challenge write it that means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation to contend for transformation and alignment so as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth that's your singular challenge that's your singular task contend for transformation give God space through your life My goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me that there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously. I look forward to a time when there will be accidents and I will just come and God will say thank you. I've always wanted to raise them but I need an access point. Joshua Selman be there. Hey. See, the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say you shall say be healed. Just take me near that person. And he will be healed God wants to go to your home but he wants to travel through you transformation the hallmark of transformation is oneness with God unity the hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of Christ your mind becomes a full expression becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of God are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of Christ are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of Christ give him space give him space very quickly before we pray the process of transformation what is the dynamic so how are you changed what's what what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly number one the first key to transformation is a life of prayer the first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly praying in the spirit when you pray in the spirit that transformation is happening 
whether you know it or not that's why i encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak join the prayer department for one month so that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life pray in the night pray in the day separate days for prayers prayer in the spirit is one of god's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly is one of the system through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself prayer is like molting the way reptiles snakes molt you, see, you know what happens when they want to expand right they come out of their current shell it's a difficult process it's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands and they have to crawl through and when they come out you now see the cocoon and the snake is big before it now crystallizes that's how you grow so while you are praying investments of prayer one hour two hours three hours sometimes you just dedicate the time morning till night worship and you just pray with fastings of course periodically not every time and something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you wouldn't know until you go for one meeting and while you are standing you are seeing people shouting everywhere and you are seeing the power of God moving and you are surprised what has happened to me space 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 you've given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination and empowerment not just petition petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounters for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i won't explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 of 1st Corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies builds up enlarges his spiritual capacity number 2 Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27 the Bible says for we know not what to pray for as we ought to it says but the spirit he makes intercession for us he searches the mind of God right he brings an intermingling it's like a salt covenant he says let us reason together it happens in the place of prayer romans 8 26 and 27 and then jeremiah 33 verse 3 prayer grants you access to light and illumination call on to me and i will answer and show the great and mighty things not small and meager things great and mighty things let me tell you look at me there is no amount of bible study that will substitute for prayer do you know why many people are not really getting revelation because what we are doing is study alone and not prayer you can study but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you make no mistakes about it you can sit down study forever get up and carry the letter that kills go and teach and not bless people but true illumination is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb he said then shall your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast but there is a type i have commanded and if you do that your light will break forth like the morning and your health will come speedily james chapter 5 verse 16 the fervent not joking and trivial prayer the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much amplified says is dynamic in its working so when you pray when you pray in the spirit you are enlarging your capacity you see why we pray you see why we believe in the ministry of prayer 
it's not the works of the law to pray and fast we are not trying to add to what jesus has done we are opening up to receive all that he has brought number two the second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word so here we have the ministry of prayer and then insight and revelation from the word notice i didn't just say the word of god is for a reason because if i say the word of god many of us have been reading bible but the insight and the revelation the illumination you get from the word of god and then in addition to that our obedience to the word of god is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us listen listen the word of god is like a bag that carries treasures your obedience to the principles of the word opens up the bags and releases the treasure inside you know how granite is it's in a shell that's principally how the word of god is when you act your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you so it's not enough to just get insight and revelation you must be willing to obey to the latter i wrote something here that is interesting revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion revelation when you have revelation insight in the bible and you do not have the willingness to obey it you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion a few scriptures mm. proverbs 24 verse 30 let's look at it very quickly we'll look at three scriptures proverbs 24 verse 30 and then acts chapter 8 29 to 30 proverbs 24 verse 30 hallelujah it says 24 verse what 30 i think i may have made a mistake okay let's go to acts 8 verse 29 to 30 while i look that up acts 8 it was a story the story of the utopian enoch watch this that guy could not experience god in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding and when the spirit said unto philip go near and join yourself to the chariot 30 and philip ran peter to him and had him read prophet isaiah and said what understandest what thou readest not just that you are reading it do you understand it's not enough to just know scriptures and cram scriptures do you understand understanding illumination insight job chapter 22 verse 22 very powerfully job 22 22 receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart receive it don't just read it receive it let light enter you the entrance of thy word give it light there is an enlargement he said write prosperously because of truth the last scripture john chapter 1 verse 12 this is the one that blew my mind the bible says as many as received him who is the him the word but as many not everybody will receive the word many will read the word many will admire the word but very few will receive it he said but as many as receives that word that word gives them power to become power to become power to become when you receive the word it gives you power to become what it says not when you read it when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about titan guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly Number three, the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship. A life of intense.
intense worship intense worship Bible says do not be drunk with wine wherein in excess he said but ye be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking to yourself in Psalms hymns spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the Lord let me tell you something about worship I've studied it very well worship brings the manifest presence of God to your life and your territory worship is a magnet there are three levels of God's presence there is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time there is what I call his Emmanuel dimension that when two people are gathered in a place he is there in their midst God with us but there is his Shekinah his manifested presence that dimension is invoked in worship second chronicles chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 let's hurry up second chronicles 5 12 to 14 second chronicles 5 it says and also the levites which were singers all of them of asaph of Haman, of Jedutun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and pastries and psalms, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, worshipping and sounding trumpets. Next verse. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for the Lord is good for his mercy endured forever that what happened the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord next verse the Shekinah of God came and rested there so that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud he said for the glory of the Lord fill the house when you maintain a life of intense worship the glory of God comes your body begins to shake a literal vibration at his presence and you are lying down there soaking in that presence for hours see this is how to walk powerful in the anointing and the glory of God that the cloud the glory of the Lord let me tell you when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life you won't even be able to stand up that Shekinah sicknesses will melt away infirmities will go away the majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you maintain a life of worship put worship songs in your phones remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activities Come and meet the worship team. Let them do a selection of soaking worship songs for you. Just lie down in your room. You may be sleeping normally, but let the songs just play. Sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing. No words to them. And you are just soaking. And after a while, the Shekinah of God, like a hand resting upon eggs. Remember what I said about the hand. A hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek how much more the glory of God when it rests upon you hallelujah Acts chapter 16 verse 25 the Bible tells us that Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison and the Bible says they prayed and they sang they sang praises to God and the prisoners had them he had them Oh my God. That's why we worship a lot in Koinonia. It's the secret of the presence. It's the secret. Look at every man that walks in the anointing. Every man that walks in the miraculous. Benny Hinn will worship for hours. Dr. Paul Enche would worship for hours. Men who know God. Men who carry the anointing. Catherine Kuhlman. All these great people. They would sing hymns and worship for hours. And when the presence rests wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves your job is to get God to the scene and step out our worship team all of them have been trained to understand the assignment of koinonia worship team is not to entertain koinonia 
the very assignment of koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of god finds expression that's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah sing it one more time you are good you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. Yeah. You are good and your forever. Let's sing it one more time. You are good. to listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this we're going to pray we're out of time rise up on your feet just two prayer points but i want you to pray with all your heart i like you to pray and ask the lord and say lord bring me to that place where the mind of christ experientially becomes my mind I'm willing to give you space go ahead and pray I'm willing to give the God of miracles space the God of breakthroughs the God of signs and wonders the God of impartations the God of salvation and revival Pray, man of God. Pray, woman of God. Pray, businessman. Give God space. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two, please. You are going to pray. I like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor. Lord, let heaven invade his life. Pray. Let heaven invade his mindset. Let heaven invade his ministry. Let heaven invade his business. Let heaven invade his marriage. Shokotopekete skatarebos. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Sheketetetetete emprokotosketete. Heaven, heaven, invade our minds, invade our souls, invade our souls, invade our bodies. Let the fullness of the capacity, the fullness of the possibilities in God find expression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. You're going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space. I make up my mind 
that I will contend for transformation. That healing anointing must come out in my life after the order of Benny Hinn, after the order of Ketrin Kuman. That prophetic mantle must find expression. I refuse to be a weak Christian. I refuse to be a weak man of God. That apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul, after the order of Smith Wigglesworth, after the order of St. Patrick. My territory will experience revival, revival, fire, 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 revival, fire, healing, fire. No playing games, no playing games with destiny, no playing games. Shake it, 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 it. The sick must be healed through my life, the oppressed must be delivered, sinners must be saved, sinners must be saved. The church must be equipped through my life. I give you space. My family must receive breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but just permit me to raise one more prayer point. Look at me. Look at me. There are two limitations to your being transformed. The first the gates of hell the solution to that is have an understanding of your authority and exercise it the second is the limitation that your mind gives you the solution content for transformation in prayer and in the word we are going to pray there are forces that are vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space there are all kinds of forces but i like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones you love them some of them don't know what you know lift your voice and cry in the next three minutes <laughs> please permit me to raise one more prayer point i know we're out of time but this is burning in my spirit look up hallelujah god is doing things fire is burning in this place listen bishop oyedeko said there was a time the church in kaduna was not growing nothing was happening they had the heart they had the mandate but they were spiritual walls and they were fasting together with the pastors lord what is it and the lord told him come out and he came out and he said look and he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud he said this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry there are people who are genuine but the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial there are spirits that make it so so people will not come to receive so people will not come to be blessed there are some of you the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated 
whenever they want to come to your life something drives them who am i speaking to lift your voice like a priest Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Forces of ancestry. Forces of darkness. Lift up your heads. Forces of delay. Lift up your head. Forces of stagnation. Lift up your heads. Forces of lukewarmness. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your heads. That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those chains will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When you confront the gates, then they will open. When you confront the gates that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gates stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gates killing your academics, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. God is not limited. We have limited him. And the spirit cries. The spirit cries. If any man will give me space. He said go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container, the oil will increase. Shut up. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness that has authorized Satan to make a chicken out of your life. I empower you tonight with strength from above. In the name of Jesus, every zeal and fire for God that has died for whatever reason, may it jump back to life today. Hallelujah.
Lord, we worship you for your faithfulness in this house. A finger that has taken us from January till December. We acknowledge you, O oh God. You are the mighty God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to walk around. Just celebrate someone and come back to your seat. Walk around. Greet someone. Hug someone. Tell them it's good to see you at the last service for the year. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to celebrate Jesus for the last service. The very, very last service. All of us. The last service for the year. Hallelujah. God bless you. I welcome everyone. Uh, I'll not be preaching tonight. Really, I think the worship team and the media have done everything. We give them kudos for everything. I just want to encourage us tonight. I was contemplating on what I would share just to encourage us. You would call it a valedictory sermon for the year. And the Lord laid just one word in my heart. And I think it's important that um, we close on this note for the year we have seen the hand of God he told us that this would be for us as a family the year of the rain and we have seen his faithfulness you cannot imagine the things that God has done around the nation we give him all the praise just one scripture Matthew 11 Matthew 11 Blessed be the name of the Lord Twenty-eight, Matthew 11 the 28th verse Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden Let's read on together. And I will give you rest. It says, Take my yoke upon you and lean of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. It said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to admonish us tonight very briefly on the subject of peace. Um, is one attribute that is grossly lacking in the world today when you put on your television all you hear is very bad negative news this person bombing this nation this person doing this when you come to our own nation all kinds of stories and um if we do not learn how a believer is supposed to live especially in our world today we will depress ourselves we will destroy ourselves are we together now our hospitals are full of people who have inflicted themselves with needless diseases the rate high blood pressure used to be a disease for old people but right now you find teenagers in the hospital with high blood pressure, stroke, and all kinds of things. The turbulence of living in today's world is catching up with so many people. Depression swallowing people up. There are so many people who beginning from the first of this month probably will not rest until the first of January. They are hoping to get the money to buy the cow for Christmas, the rice, 
some of you are depressing yourself over your transport <coughs> excuse me your transport fare back home and all kinds of things listen let me tell you something peace is one of the cardinal representations of the presence of the kingdom the bible says the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink are we together but in what righteousness peace this peace is not just a state of quietness it's a state of rest that's what jesus said he will give he said come on to me and i will give you rest it's from the word shalom it's not just a a state of non-disturbance is it's a state of rest the psalmist put it in a very beautiful way he says um he restores my soul he says he leads me beside the still waters the more of a leader you become the more you will see the need for peace in your life and the need to be an advocate of that peace lord make us instruments of your peace where there is let your love increase lord make us your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments the first revelation I want to give you about peace and a state of rest is that it is a choice peace has nothing to do with what is happening around you listen listen peace has nothing to do with the external environment there are so many people who tell you i don't have peace because i don't have money how can i have peace i don't have peace because i'm not married i don't have peace because there's no admission i don't have peace because i have a carryover or no job or no child um satan understands that men are carnally minded are we together he knows that the impulses of the carnal man is based on the things around him and so he takes advantage of the happenings in our lives all right and then brings us to a point where we cannot enjoy this shalom this restfulness there are so many people worried you see young people just sit like this and you ask them what they say life and you're wondering what is making that person so depressed what is life the only set of people we believe should have peace are those who die that's why we tell them rest in not in joy not in love because we have informed ourselves that peace is only for dead people once you are alive in this world we have programmed ourselves to believe that it is strange for a man to be a peaceful person peace is not quietness peace is not lack of noise no peace is a state of rest a settled state of rest that is based on the revelation of who god is and the integrity of his person hallelujah believe me you have mastered the art of living if you sustain a technology in the spirit to generate peace regardless of situations and circumstances at that point you are guaranteed to live long everyone say peace one of the greatest blessings that jesus brings to us is peace not just salvation but peace you can have all the money in the world and with it will come multiplied troubles there are people who were more peaceful poor than they are now millionaires but cannot sleep are we together now 
have you not read what solomon said he said here the conclusion of the matter he said of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul he said but this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commandments then he says this is the whole duty of man it's too much in this life to disturb your peace every 24 hour in your life is full of enough trouble to jeopardize your life you don't have to be a bad person the world we live in from the person who greets you in the morning to the one you quarrel with before sleeping there are so many people who cannot sleep you ask them why they say kai but well, I'm, I'm a lenient person abi they are treating me too much in this life this is what they are thinking about There are ideologies that have robbed us of the peace of God. The Bible says that peace surpasses all understanding. It's not scientific. You don't calculate it. It's part of the true representations of a spiritual man. A spiritual man has sustained a system in the spirit to be peaceful. A state of rest. Kai, the way people worry the way people depress themselves is a dangerous thing god gave me this word that in this season it's important for us to come once again into this covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken nothing that is an emergency enough to rob you of that joy and that restfulness that comes in knowing who christ is hallelujah our world is full of worry everybody say worry jesus dedicated a whole chapter matthew chapter 6 talking about worry the bible says do not worry listen do you know why people lose their peace what to eat what to wear are we together and all the mundane cares of life from marriage to children to money to lack of it to too much of it to human beings there's too much to rob us of our peace husbands have lost relationships with their wives because of the cares of this world lack of peace many homes today have become habitations of worry and stress the tension that you see in the life of people is too much but there is a system there is a technology in the spirit that can keep a man restful may that be your experience listen i'm telling you if you are not a man and a woman of peace you are not walking in the experience of the kingdom it has nothing to do with whether you have money in your pocket or not many of us have tied our peace to naira and kobo so when you check and you find hundred thousand when pastor femi gave the testimony of the millions coming i saw the relief it's not your money but just the the fact that money is available gave a lot of us that sigh of relief and i felt very disappointed if you allow money to define your peace or otherwise you make yourself a slave to satan how many people smile only at the end of the month have you seen the way people are happy when they are slotting their atm even if there's nothing just the consciousness that i'm around money it's a very demonic thing listen listen this is the last teaching for the year it's a very demonic way to live you cannot tie your peace to anything in time because it will kill you fast your peace must be tied to a person not things your peace must be tied to a person his name is jesus oh i like joe come on the bible tells us that job when everything whether he had it or not of course he was human but the bible lets us know that job the, the bible says he sinned not with his mouth peace when you check your cgpa and you see that everything works out fine then you have peace look look at how worry is killing so many people it's one of satan's greatest arsenal in our day 
worry, anxiety, depression. Hear what Jesus said. John 14. John 14. Are you getting blessed tonight? John 14. Verse 27. John 14, 27. Can we read it? One, two, read. Not a bank account. Listen. Peace. I live with you. So that you are not confused. Not peace that comes from money. He said, my peace. There is a type that God gives. There is a type that the world gives. The peace you get when you receive salary. The peace you get when your insecurities are gone. People consult witches and wizards today because of lack of confidence in God. Insecurity has depressed men. Insecurity causes lack of peace. He said, my peace I give to you. He says, not as the world give it. That means there is a kind of peace you get in this world. Peace that is tied to things. Are we together now? And so there's depression. Everywhere. You come and you find out that there's no light. Oh, never. Eh? And you are angry. And the devil says, that's right. I have found out that circumstances can control the peace gauge of this person. And somebody just annoys you. You receive a very, very nasty text from somebody. And while you are meditating upon it, you hear that, ah, mama is sick at home. And you sit down and say, Kai, what is this life about? And Satan says, this is it. This is exactly the state I want. Because every time righteousness, peace, and joy cohabit, the kingdom must find expression there. And so Satan knows that every time I can take one of these factors away, it's impossible for that person to experience the kingdom. Do you not know that with all your depression, five minutes without your breath, and there's nothing to talk about again. Truly, human beings are really foolish. The word of God gives us wisdom. You find out the way we depress ourselves over several things. I once met a gentleman and I saw him so worried. I said, why? He said, at my age, my father had a car. Hi! And so, <laughs> and so I told him, I said, so what does that mean? He said, can you imagine? Ah! I can't make myself a slave like that. Even if I'm going to think, let me think of something noble constructed metals stopping you from sleeping in the night is that not idolatry are we together now think of the things that depress us brothers and sisters and you find out that at the root of them do you know that most of the things that are free in life they are the most important things the things that God knows that money cannot buy, he gave you freely. The air you breathe, the blessings of relationships, the gift of salvation. Most of the things we depress ourselves about, the truth is we can live without them. We have chosen based on an ideology to pressure ourselves. Look at the lovely sister that came to share about her phone getting bad. How many people will not sleep today? If I'm robbers take well not I'm, I'm robbers don't steal phone I'm, that a thief anybody just carries your phone this gets missing and you see them moving around where is my phone they wake up by two they wake up by three they go to Zaria City I must find out who did this peace Jesus said my peace I live with you Koinonia not as the world gives you frustrate satan when you have found a system that does not disrupt your peace you have found a system that maintains your rest hallelujah when satan sees that nothing in time 
can affect this state of restfulness we hate because we do not have the peace of god we depress ourselves we are sick sick and sick and sick people going to the hospital the doctors cannot find anything because they are depressing themselves you you are so depressed you fall down and not even know you're falling down somebody says stand up and you say you mean i fell down what were you thinking about at what age I refuse to allow anything in time it's a choice I reject it I refuse to allow anything in time corrupt that restful state it's a state I've found that is only possible in Christ a state of rest you will never know this peace if you are outside of Christ there is a revelation that brings you to this peace let me tell you what that revelation is if God does not open a door it cannot be opened Ah, and if God opens that door it cannot be closed I have learned by experience that worry does not solve anything it only complicates your life and your problems how many ladies you see them 25 depressed why husband what is that you are so passionate and depressed over your husband the day he comes you are even annoyed that he has come Do you know there is a way you can worry over but it does not bless you even when it comes the worry is too much even the miracle you no longer celebrate it jesus said my peace i live with you give it to us again media my peace john 14 27 my peace there is a kind that he gives He says, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be what? What is the opposite of peace? A troubled heart. He said, let not your heart. In other words, permit it not. Choose to refuse your heart from being troubled. He said, neither let it be afraid. These are the things that choke the peace of God. Fear. Fear. The fear of the future. How many young people are afraid of the future? What will my life become? You are afraid of getting admission. You are now afraid of graduating. You are afraid of getting a job. You are afraid of not getting one. Ah! He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Anxiety is something that is, is okay with the natural man. It's part of our build up as natural men. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Anxiety. Right? anxiety anxiety has depressed people it is that lack of peace anxiousness anxious about everything oh i want to know what tomorrow holds i want to know what this holds and we we go into all kinds of ungodly strategies because we are afraid how many parents have gone to make sacrifices for their children tell me what the future of my child will be will he be great will he not be great tell me this and they say okay go and bring a cow go and bring a ram i want to know i'm afraid let me know if tell me if i will live up to 10 years Abba. there is a state of restfulness that when you wake up in the morning you give him all the praise and you say thank you lord for peace you hear news that is depressing and you say lord in all things I cannot explain what has happened but lord i thank you i i may not know the details but one thing i know is that you are faithful you are faithful for the things you've done for me tiri -do 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 -tiri -do. for the life you've given me 
draw me close to you. There's too much anxiety in our world. We are afraid. We are insecure. Right? We are troubled over nothing. Watch students when result is about to come out. Something that will be pasted and you will know. Anxiety makes people to be roaming around. They see a lecturer and they are good afternoon, sir. Did I pass? Just be patient. Something that in the next 10 minutes will be pasted there and will be left there. Anxiety. Do you know anxiety can preempt you and open up seasons that was not supposed to be open? Anxiety can make you do things. You can go ahead of your destiny to your detriment. of God that surpasses all understanding and people look at you if you are a man of peace you must be strange because people look at you and say ah is it not you they said your father died and you say well I cried but to him be all the glory say no 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 let's go and find out we must trace the root of this and you say God is faithful ah. you are rejoicing and they tell you one million naira has entered your account you say I rejoice but it doesn't make any difference I am still restful. And God says, so the one million, you say, well, I'm happy. It doesn't change anything. And the devil says, where in the world do I get this person? How come you have a constant state of rest, regardless of what happens? You are in a relationship with a guy, you are happy, planning your wedding, and he looks and says, I'm not doing it. And while you cry, he says, Lord, you are faithful. I may not have him, but I have you. Give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you listen many of us do not know the value and the, the treasure of having Jesus Christ. I know we, we profess it. We claim we know. But the truth is, it's not in our lives. The, our, our unrestfulness shows Jesus there is something that is higher than him in our life. Listen, if I give you one million, Sam, right? Let me use money so that we we'll understand. If I give you one million, Sam, and you see five naira falling on the ground, Will you leave the one million to pick it? If you leave the one million to pick it, what does that mean? It's impossible for you to say, I value this. That's what, that's what is responsible for the turbulence in our lives. You have the greatest gift and you throw him away and you are looking at other things that are mundane because in your mind, although we claim through our songs that he is everything, but the truth of the matter is that our passion and obsession about things of a lesser value show that they are, out, they are truly the gods in our life. When a man has Jesus Christ, listen, please hear me. I know we live in a society that thinks what I'm saying is old school. When a man has the Christ and the revelation of the operation of the kingdom, you have the greatest gift in your life. Brothers and sisters, whether in plenty or in little, you are a man of peace. How many gentlemen are about to be bad fathers because their joy and their peace is tied to things around? The moment the man is promoted, everybody receives the joy. The moment he fights with somebody in the office, everybody is going to receive a share of that anger. That's a bad life. 
I don't have enemies in my life. Believe me. I cannot hate a man. I know this sounds arrogant. It's not the natural Joshua Selman, but I'm human, but I cannot. That quality is no longer in me. The light of God has consumed me. I found a key. Love never fails. When was the last time they taught you this? When they were teaching you on an antidote against failure? Did they ever teach you that love never? What does never mean? There is no possibility. Hmm. Love. So I live a very restful life. If I go back and I find my place burned to ashes, I will look at it and say, wow. The only pain is I will say I did not carry my books where I write the visions in my life. But in five minutes, I'm rejoicing. Satan has lost the art of wearing me. I, I humiliate him with my peace. Hmm. Are we together? I can sit down with a cup of gari and rejoice the same way I will sit down with Toki. I can sit down in a five-star hotel and rejoice the same way I will sit down in a mat. If that is not your case, you are already in deception. The devil is about to hack your life into pieces. I will never... No, 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 no. Whether I'm, watch, I'm wearing a watch of 100,000 or wearing a rubber watch of 50 naira, it does not make any difference as far as peace is concerned. Are we together? Whether you are wearing a shirt of 1 million or you are wearing a shirt of 10 naira, it doesn't make any difference. Never allow the things around you to define your state of rest. You are not a Christian. You are not a true Christian. I'm telling you this. When that happens, I have found life. I have found peace. I'm not teaching you to be irresponsible, but I am telling you, you master living when you learn to be peaceful. That nothing in time can disrupt that restfulness. Whether in tears or in joy, whether in plenty or in little, you have learned to maintain a spiritual equilibrium. There is a, there is a, a spiritual buffer. Nothing will take you out of that state. You are a true spiritual man. Some of us are probably seated right now, depressed. I want to travel tomorrow. God knows I need 2,000. What I have is 500. Because of one five, you will not sleep. And your not sleeping will not bring it. You see the trouble. Worry was never designed to bring solutions. It was designed to depress you. If I don't trust myself, why can't I trust? If you don't trust yourself, trust God. my peace i move up brothers and sisters i am amazed every 24 hours i watch people and i am shocked as they are at their ideology why do people think this way why can't they be peaceful why won't you choose to be peaceful listen some of you look at you're not even so old but look look at the way your life is depressed worry and anger and hatred always cynical always on the negative side talking about everything that is not working in your life and the life of people why don't you change what you see why don't you change what you see i don't see negative things all i see is the faithfulness of god in my life all i see is the mercy of god he is the goodness of god in my life God has been good to me. If he never blesses me in this life, he does not owe me anything. I owe him my life and eternity. That's how to live. That's how to live. You kept 10,000 naira, I got missing. 
you are crying you are yelling you are quoting scripture the prayers you would not have prayed to bring you into intimacy you pray for two hours and you start checking oh god your word said even god who called the dead and called the things that be not as though they were lord me i'm saying this thing is my own it must come i'm telling you it's not the prayer of faith it's the prayer of selfishness and idolatry The greatest gift I have in my life, listen, is not the anointing. The greatest gift I have in my life is not money. The greatest gift I have in my life is not people. The greatest gift I have in my life is the presence of Jesus. Ah! In life and in death. The worst that can happen to me is that I will die. You will cry for seven days and say, ah, ah he taught us about long life. It doesn't matter. I'm God. <laughs> And at the end of it, it's peace. Many of us are already on our way to produce bad families because of depression. What is wrong? No money. How can I be happy? Are you not seeing what is happening in Nigeria? Buari's government is this and that and that. How is it providing for your needs? Have you not read, My God shall supply? Leave that one, Jare. We are talking about real issues now. You are not a Christian. A true believer, listen, a true believer is one who has staked his life on God's word. I believe the word of God to death, to death, to death. I believe the word of God. My life revolves around it. I will never allow anything in this life to depress me. It does not have that ability. If I'm told today that any of my loved one is dead, God forbid, I will cry. But in it, I will get up. And the only song that will come out of my lips is the song of his faithfulness. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful. We are saying faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Listen, create a limit for the effect of the things in this life as far as your relationship with God is concerned. The presence of Jesus is more than gold. It's more than a billion dollars the presence of jesus is more than koinonia is more i will give up koinonia one thousand times for the presence of jesus i will give up anything and i mean it in this life no i will give give aside every accomplishment and everything for the presence of jesus that's the gift i have I, you hear people say, ah, my reputation is at stake. I don't even have one. Ah, I don't have one. I'm telling you, my reputation is his reputation. I'm too young to kill myself with that kind of ideology. I have no reputation of my own. Help me, sir. Thank you. I want you to get a revelation tonight inside and outside as we wrap up this year make a choice that for the rest of my god-given life i choose peace i choice no matter what happens in my life i made that choice i choose to be happy people see you and say you are always laughing then they come to your house and find out that the only thing there is water there's no gary and they say, so why are you laughing? What's the laughter for? The laughter is because you have come into oneness with one who is greater than anything that can come. See, let me tell you, please, please. Lose the, the affection you have for things. You hear me say this all the time. You must get to a point in your life, Koinonia, where nothing in time has the ability 
to steal away the presence of Jesus. When John, or no, not John now, when Peter was about to die, they were about to kill the body. Right? They put him on a cross and he said, no, they cannot crucify me the same way they crucified my Savior. Look at a man. He said, turn me upside down. I am not worthy to be crucified that way. What did these people know? That in the midst of their depression, Paul will write a letter encouraging people and Paul will say, I'm in chains. In chains. A man in chains telling people, count it all joy, my brethren. When you go through diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. In chains. You are not in chains. Yet we are depressed. Please, I want you to, I want you to weary Satan with your passion for Jesus Christ. Weary Satan with your passion for the things of God. Oh, I wanted to give you 10,000. I no longer will give you. Say to God be the glory. And he said, what kind of person are you? Is it that you don't get angry? You have sustained a system. For as long as God is alive, I remain peaceful. My depression will start the day someone can dethrone him. And then at that point, I know that my life is no longer secure. Listen, the oldest man on earth today is not up to 120 years. So what is the vanity? Are we together? The vanity in this life that makes us to get up. You are pursuing car. You are pursuing jeep. You are pursuing this. You are pursuing that. Oh, they said in the village, I'm not successful. Let me prove to them. Who cares? Are they successful? They in the village, are they successful? They said they don't marry fast in our family. That's their cup of tea, frankly speaking. See, learn, learn to, learn to ignore Satan. It's one way to conquer him. Ignore his proposals and you will step into a state of rest. Someone looks and says, have you gotten the admission? Say, why now? Ah, say, God is faithful. I know that he makes all things beautiful in his time. They say, oh, forget that, you know, you are disappointing us and you, you leave them away. And when you go, the devil will say, think on these things. And you say, no, the Bible says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, if there be a good report, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. Okay. This unemployment, why are we like this? And then you turn to your friend and say, why are we suffering like this? The friends say, Ataya, oh, Naso, Nigeria, they know. You are, you are thinking like a non-Christian. The peace of God. See, let me tell you what will happen if you are living in peace. Men must hate you. Because, you see, there is a popular saying that misery likes company. When people are frustrated, they try to look for those who are like them. So that they can form a team. We, the committee of humiliated people. And the moment you refuse it, they interpret it as pride. What are you saying? Are you not older than us? At least me, I'm 28. You, you are 32. You are not depressed. You are not joining us in this. Thing. I'm, I'm not joining. I'm not a party to all of this. Five years after graduating, no job. You won't come. Let's discuss this thing. Say, no, I'm not a party to all of this. Are you willing to be that different? To ignore the mockery and maintain the peace of the kingdom? There's too much depression in our world. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. The person who is depressed, humanly speaking, does not even have any guarantee whether he will wake up the next day. Yet he's thinking. People have accidents under the... Me. Thank you. Depression makes them to begin to hallucinate. They think the road is this way, whereas it's this way. They go and bash into a tree and die. Say, I, I thought I saw the bend this way. Frustration. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Jesus. 
I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember a man whose car had accident when he came and saw the car burning he fell down there and died if that guy gets to heaven and i'm jesus this is the first thing i'm going to do i'll say what brought you here and he said i died i said of what he said car i'll say go back he must go back for that you must win at least a thousand souls <laughs> oh no come on you don't die and enter the gates of heaven if i'm jesus you must go back and win souls one by one not general one by one you die because your car caught fire they stole your clothes from january you are still remembering it now see listen do you let me tell you something anything you hold on to you are telling god this is the limit of my life don't ever lift me beyond this limit because at this point this has become my god i love him you never hear me pray all those nonsense prayers oh god why me why all of these things why eh? oh god won't you won't you no 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 i'm a lover of your presence I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover. anxiety and this rage right have you seen friends do this I, I believe you don't do it um christians should not do that but there are friends that do that um they deliberately look for trouble they keep saying things and instigating anger and then they laugh there are people who if they laugh at you there is a way they laugh at you do, do you have such kind of people in your life oh my goodness they laugh at you in a way that you, you don't you, you 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 try to check i see that i'm stupid am i a clown what is the meaning of all this if you live your life like that there are many of those kinds of people around the world you will hate yourself and you will translate that hatred to every other person around you i love myself god knows i love myself I've, I've said it again and again here that philosophy of hanging yourself even if i were not born again it would never happen to hang myself no i'd rather die in a sleep but not to hang myself who buys the rope <laughs> me go to the market and buy a rope to hang myself <laughs> say i choose to be peaceful shout it i choose to be peaceful i make up my mind to be a person of peace go home with this mindset and see how you will discomfort a lot of people because for some of you they are waiting for you there is a part of the gist that has been it's like a pie they left it for you they are hoping that you come and they say come and tell us your version of the suffering in nigeria and they say well i I have just one thing to say god is faithful and they say please please let's be real we're also christians they say this is my reality i mean it I'm, I'm not playing games and then they get angry right people always get angry when you don't conform i once met a woman who was angry said that she's been barren for a number of years and um, this was woman. She said, I went to the hospital. They said I'm okay. They said I'm okay. It's my husband that knows what A and B and C and, and you know I don't want to. He has this whole medical this in and all of that. He's the one. Blah 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 blah. From his father's side. From this and that. And I knew that this woman would not carry a child for a long time. 
with this bad attitude there is, the kingdom cannot come because there is no peace it's an equation there must be righteousness there must be peace and there must be joy when these three cohabit it grants access it's like a spiritual code hallelujah and I looked at the woman and I said madam the issue is not to throw blames and say it's your husband two have become one that's what the Bible says if he gets money now will you say it's his money or will you say it's our money see that and I encourage her and pray with her peace I give unto you I don't know what you are going through right now but let me tell you I don't want to know one thing I know is that your way out must be the way of peace depression will never bring you solution are we together worry and discussing issues with people who cannot help you will not bring you out Jesus said John 14 please 27 my peace I give to you my peace I give unto you the Bible says one of the names you will be called is the Prince of peace not the prince of worry look at Jesus on the cross going through the pains of the nail and then he looks at John and says John behold your mother mother behold your son what kind of peace is that a 33 year old man naked on the cross he would have been angry look at Stephen when they were about to stone him he looked into heaven. The only guy that did what Jesus did was advocating forgiveness for the people. That's a state of peace. May God make you a man and a woman of peace, I'm telling you. In plenty, it does not change you. In not plenty, it does not change you. Right? When people annoy you, and instead of you boiling around, you just find a song of melody in moments like this i sing out a song i sing out a love song to jesus in moments like this i sing out a song i sing out a song to the lord singing i love you lord singing i love you lord singing i love you lord i love you some of us are going to be going home let me tell you what some of you will meet in your house poverty like never before it's not a prophecy some of you that's that's the truth you will go home and they will tell you they've not paid workers for months and then you can choose to join them in the depression or be an instrument of peace and say look i know that things are not going on right now but i tell you a day will come when we will rejoice in this house they say where is that day we are talking of now now some of you, the moment your parents see you, they'll be angry because they're thinking of school fees. And you tell them, no, God is faithful. Right? Some of us are going back to our loved ones. And we may not have anything much in our hands to go and bless them at home and we're depressed. It should never be so. You choose peace. Never allow Satan depress you. The Lord put this in my heart to share with us tonight. I'm going to prophesy and bless us for the year. But I want everyone here, those listening outside, let nothing be so serious in this life such as to disrupt your peace. There is a childlikeness you must have if you want to live into this world. Some of us are too matured for God to use us. We are too, we are too bossy. We are too old. We are not childlike enough. I choose to be a child before his presence. I will be a child with my children and my grandchildren. I will still remain a child in his presence. To tremble at his word. 
nothing is too serious in life to depress me nothing is too serious in life to make me hate people and get depressed all around no joy no peace no i teach you the art of living i teach you the way winners live The key is to hand over everything to God. I'm rounding up. I know you think you are born again. But let me tell you, when worry still kills you, you are not truly born again. There is a part of you that has not been surrendered to you. From beginning to the end, it will always be always be you jesus oh jesus you gave him your joy you gave him your spiritual life you gave him your prayer life but your financial life you left away from him and that's where the devil is using to kill you because you've not handed it over we're going to do a handover ceremony where you will take every aspect of your life and say god i'm tired if it's based, I, I would this marriage issue will kill me. This job issue will kill me. This barrenness issue, I hand it over. Listen, he said, Come unto me, all ye that are what? Weary and heavy laden. What did he say? I will give you rest. Do you have it? Do you have that rest, Koinonia? Do you have that rest today? If you have it, it will tell in your life. If you have it, it will tell in your lack of desperation for mundane things. Oh, when will this come? Oh, when will this? No, 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 no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I can wait. I can wait. There is no hurry about it. I can, I can wait for tomorrow to come. Ah, no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I just can't wait. Why? Why? The only thing I cannot wait for is anything that has to do with the kingdom. Every time I get up on Fridays when I'm around, I, I almost cannot wait for evening because I want to be able to bless the people. Any other thing that is not direct, so winning. No, I can't be that desperate about it. I can wait. Can you wait for the car to come? Answer me. Some of you can't wait. Can you wait for the car to come? Can you wait for the husband to come? Can you wait for the wife to come? Can you wait for the promotion to come? All the days of my appointed time, I will until my change comes. If you force a door to open that God did not open, it will open, but it will open and kill you. Oh, I choose to wait. I choose to wait. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful, not in your time, in his time. He has the clock, right? And if you will wait for him, he will beautify your life. Some of you cannot wait to get into ministry. That's why you will die like a chicken. The first person you prayed for, they beat you and say, don't come around our house again. Because God is saying, wait, he say, no, my blood is hot. Calm down. Calm down. I choose to wait i choose to experience that peace there are three prayer points we are going to pray desperately tonight and then i'll prophesy over our lives and we'll be done this is the message that i want us to close coin on with. the first prayer point is a prayer point of handover let me explain it and then we'll pray that you get to a point come where you take your life and donate it to God. Lord, I'm tired of this trouble. He said, my yoke is easy. The one you are carrying is not easy. That means it's not of God. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Will you hand it over to God and say, Lord, I'm tired of depressing myself. This is my conviction. I am a complete complete servant of God if my reputation goes bad he's the one to receive it if God honors me he's still the one to receive it are we together if I lack food to eat and I don't have the energy no soul winning 
no salvation who pays the price if there's food to eat i make god responsible for my life i play my own part of the deal and i don't i never dabble into his part it's god's part lord i leave it to you i have done my own part of faithfulness i know you are you are too faithful and then you rest we are going to hand over you know let me tell you how to know the area you've not handed over to god the one you think about all the time the one you are obsessed about and you are almost dying about god is not yet lord of that area are we are we ready to pray rise up on your feet everyone please i want everybody to pray pray seriously hallelujah lift your voice and cry mention the areas in your life that cause you sorrow and depression and say lord i hand it over to you go ahead and pray go ahead and pray i hand it over to you oh god i'm tired of killing myself i'm tired of dying slowly it all belongs to you Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. it all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Now turn it into a prayer. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Rekete kababa shatalabaka. Father, I lay aside every financial worry. Pray, I lay aside every worry about job i lay aside every worry about children every worry about ministry i choose peace i choose peace i reject worry i choose peace oh you make me lie down in green pastures Beside the still waters, Kabarakato shekete lebo, Embro koto poske shekete, shekete le koto stopre kete, Embro kaba ba kapra teska na ba ya na ba na ba. Make sure you pray. You are the Prince of Peace, and I have received you in my life. I receive your peace. I receive your peace. This wicked world, I receive your peace. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For what? He cares. That's the second prayer point. Listen, don't think God does not know that life is full of troubles are we together he's called the ancient of days don't think he's not aware of your challenges but he still he still tells you my peace i give to you the second prayer point is you are going to lay aside every trouble bring it before him and say lord this is what is disturbing me this is that which is troubling me i i bring it to your throne lift your voice and pray I bring it before your throne. Oh, I bring it before your throne. I exchange my body for your body. I exchange my yoke for your yoke. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. Lord, that which I've been carrying is killing me. Hey, 
I lose affection for anything that is not you. I, I can use them, but they will never win my heart. Lift your voice and pray. I lose affection for money. I lose affection. Pray. Pray. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. Alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, I lose affection. Money will never depress me. Pray, I lose affection. That loss for material things, that loss for fame, that loss for power, that loss for accomplishment. I lose it. I break away from 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 it. Everything I've held on to. The last prayer point let's add one more cause the spirit of depression worry anxiety it is of the devil open your mouth and curse it open your mouth and curse it i reject you in my life i reject you in my family i reject you in the name of Jesus, I reject worry. I reject anxiety. I reject depression. In the name of Jesus. Shabakata la bararabos. Lekete proskete. Enkretos koto lekete. Rekete kete lebo koto pregele belelebo. Rekete kere boto supradish. Lekete kete te te mo kopre te kete. Reject it. Reject it from your destiny. My God is faithful. My God is faithful. I refuse depression. Nigeria will not make me depressed. The government will not make me depressed. The economy will not make me depressed. The happenings around my life cannot make me depressed. I reject depression. God is faithful. My God is alive. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing Savior.
Gentlemen, say after me in the name of Jesus. I will be a man of peace. My home will be your peace. I reject depression. I reject worry. I reject frustration. I embrace the peace of God. Peace above money. Peace above fame. Peace above prestige. Peace above accomplishments. This must be your understanding. You must embrace the peace of God above and beyond every other thing. I want to prophesy to you in closing. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. Help us media. Hosea 12 13. This will be the last service for the year many of us from tomorrow will be traveling you cannot ignore the place of prophecy it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen when Israel cried in Egypt God did not go to them to rescue them. God went to a man and said, are you hearing my people cry? Are we together? God would have gone to Egypt and said, okay, I have come. But God went to a man and left the salvation of the people in the hand of a man. It says by a man, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Right? He says, and by a prophet was he, Israel, preserved. Listen. One of the greatest revelations I've had this year is understanding the operation of the body of Christ. The Bible says that the church, give us Ephesians chapter 2, please. Let's just look at that one scripture. I'm about to prophesy to you and I need you to have this understanding. Ephesians. Hmm. Let's look at 19 and 20. 19 and 20, quickly please. Ephesians 2, 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And he said, all of you are members of the household of God. Right? 21. Okay, 20. He says, and are built upon what? The foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Listen, you must understand how God built the body. He said the moment you get born again there are two ministries you must encounter if your destiny must arise he says you must encounter these foundational ministries the ministries of the apostles and the prophets it's not about human worship it's how god built the kingdom he said it is built upon this truth foundation there means upon this truth this revelation it's called the foundation of the Lord. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord does what? Stands sure. You can't change it. It stands sure. So by a prophet, every time people cry, God never comes to them. He comes to them through a man. Go and read your Bible. When there was famine, God came to a man. There are human beings that God has sent that hold the prayer points of people that carry anointings that can open the destinies of people but the bible tells us 
that you have a role to play let's look at that one scripture second chronicles 2020 20, right your job is to believe second chronicles 2020 20. he said believe in the lord your god so you shall be established but it's not enough to just believe in god he said believe in his prophets he didn't say the prophets believe in his prophets so shall he make progress so shall he do well so shall he prosper see this is the formula don't try to create another one you will punish yourself for nothing the church was built on the foundations every time god hears the cry of a people he goes to a man and he says you heard their cry i thought god will come to egypt by himself but he went to moses when creation was crying in sin jesus had to become a man because they searched and no man was righteous enough so jesus became a man even god did not come directly he had to become flesh are you not seeing how it works when the revelation of the of the new testament was to come to the body a man had to be found in the name of apostle paul and he brought that fellowship of the mystery to the body of christ when satan wants to destroy you he will make you believe in god and disrespect his prophets are you seeing that he won't tell you to stop believing in god you say believe in god after all everybody has equal access to god and you will fool yourself and see that you are praying and fasting but nothing is happening when the widow in Zarephath was in trouble God went to a man immediately and said I have commanded you go are you not seeing it when Samaria was in trouble I thought God would have gone to them he never went to the lepers he brought in a man and he said by this time the moment the man spoke God looked for lepers. In other words, the tool God will use is not necessary. Let the prophecy just come. He can use anything. An axe head can float back when a stick comes. But it must be at the instruction of the prophet. He said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? If that man threw a stick, nothing would happen. But he did it at the word. Prophecy is powerful. I learned this from God's servant, Bishop David Oyede. He has changed the lives of people with prophecy but it only works to them that believe you don't receive a prophetic word from a colleague you don't receive a prophetic word from a friend i've taught it here there are individuals that are not pure human beings lift your hands god's ability god's ability it's working in me It's working in me God's ability God's ability It's working in me It's working in me Sing one more time God's ability hallelujah I've shared with you again and again my visions how that I saw an endless sea of people and they were crying no food no water and I said who is the cause and they pointed at me and I was afraid because some people had chased me to come into that small room where I was hiding and I made up my mind I said I was still going to go out and rescue them if I perish I perish the moment I opened the door, I saw a giant and he held my hands and he said, I will walk with you. Brothers and sisters, this is not, it's not about human beings or human boasting. It's about God's spiritual system. Arguing it is foolishness. There are many prisoners today paying the...
the foundation of the Lord and the Bible says that foundation is the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic I want to speak over your life listen the year is not too late for God to finish what he said he would do are we together oh no come on we have at least 20 more days it doesn't take time is it not a prophet of God that said by this time tomorrow it doesn't take time it is only unto men according to their faith don't say it's the end of the year God does not work with human calendar he works with his word the moment the word of God comes he said he said let there be and there was in the name that is above all names I prophesy over your life every package that is meant to come into your destiny in this year of the rain that is yet to be delivered I prophesy it into your life right now in the name of Jesus I prophesy it into your life right now in the name of Jesus I prophesy it into your life right now in the name of Jesus every request you have dropped here from January, February, March, April, May and now it's December and it looks like God has failed you let me prophesy to you that by 31st of December in the name of the Lord Jesus you will be holding your testimony I prophesy to you that by 31st of December you will be holding your testimony may not be possible with men but the Bible says with God we are involving God in this talk every level of prosperity you should have entered in this year of the rain and for whatever reason and by any means you have not entered it let this next 20 days days of supernatural supplies hallelujah that spirit that destroys men towards the end of the year that people would have labored have you seen obituaries 28 December 29 December some even 31st in the name that is above all names may a seal of longevity come upon your life may a seal of longevity come upon your life I forbid death from coming towards your habitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the frustration you usually face at home there are some of us December times at times of pain poverty this December will be the best you have ever had I prophesy it this December will be the best you have ever had in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has troubled your heart everything that has brought tears to your life you cannot even share with people because of the pains I prophesy to you tonight the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation I declare unto you the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation every challenge in your health every sickness I don't care what it is that has refused to go this night in the name of Jesus we challenge it and we command it to live your life forever we command it to live your life forever A dimension of favor you did not see from January to November 
I decree that you will have it beginning from this night. I prophesy it again beginning from this night. Not tomorrow, this night. May that dimension of favor come over your life in the name of Jesus. Everything you are praying for is restoration. There are people who have lost things and you are trusting God. You are saying, Lord, before the end of the year, let a miracle come. The Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy restoration for you. I prophesy restoration for you. In a way and a manner that you have not heard. Listen, did you hear the testimony of Pastor Femi and his family? 18 years, even if it's 1,000, they are paying you every month. At the end of 18 years, you will have something to smile enough with. If your salary was 100,000, calculate it times 18 years, plus benefit and allowance. That kind of restoration in the name that is above all names, may it come upon your life tonight. I prophesy to you, receive that restoration right now. The testimony that you need to take home as an evidence that this was the year of the rain for you. The testimony you must hold and tell people, look, this is a symbol of God's faithfulness. I release it upon your hand right now. I release it upon your hand right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you be a burning and a shining light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Through your hands, many will be healed. Through your hands, many will be saved. I place an unction of the Almighty upon you. That as you go back to your various locations and stations, you will come back with a harvest of dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Next year for you will be a it will be a balance brought forward of everything everything in the years past that have refused to come it will be a balance brought forward for you in the name of Jesus Christ listen it is still the year of the rain are you hearing me it is still the year of the rain and I prophesy to you whatever the rain represents within these few weeks we have to the end of the year may you experience the full revelation of what the rain represents hallelujah any human upon the face of the earth who is holding the key to your blessing the key to your breakthrough in the name that is above all names from the north to the south the east and the west between now and 31st december by prophecy i call them into your life by prophecy i call them into your life in the name of the lord jesus christ samuel told saul he said as you go back you will find out that the donkey that has been missing has been found and then he said you will see three men you will see them holding bread they will give you from the bread whoever is holding what is supposed to be given to you whatever resistance and manipulation from hell is stopping them from releasing it i command that between now and the end of the year it comes into your hands in the name of jesus christ I pray for every family represented here the kind of Christmas celebration you have never seen from birth in the name that is above all names may it be experienced this December whatever ties away financial supplies from your families during this festive period so that they celebrate Christmas like frustrated people I decree and I prophesy in the name of Jesus may it be a different one this time around for those of you who are going to be traveling far and wide 
we declare that the mystery of the blood goes with you all through in the name of Jesus Christ in one minute I'd like you to ask everything remaining that you want God to do please in one minute go ahead I'm releasing my faith with you in one minute every other thing you are trusting God for don't say it can't happen open your mouth and pray oh I release my faith I release my faith one can chase a thousand two can chase ten thousand open your mouth and place a demand on the faithfulness of God Lord I still believe you pray tell him I still believe today is the 11th of December but I still believe it says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come I agree with you that whatever you have declared before God may it become a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah let me make an altar call quickly please I like everybody to be around this is our last service I'll make some announcements there are people inside and outside this is the last service you probably were here from January February and every time you hear an altar call like this something resists you from coming out maybe you've never experienced this peace with this prince called Jesus or probably there are some of you who have given your hearts to the Lord but at one point or the other you found yourself derailing this is our last service let this be the service where you give up on yourself and embrace his majesty I'll count one to five wherever you are I believe that there are still people outside there are still people inside please leave your seats don't wait for anybody to come before you make your way to the front right now one I count one to five wherever you are God bless you as you come they are coming there are people coming from inside and outside clear the way for them God bless you God bless you God bless you don't be ashamed this is the last service for the year let it be that at the last koinonia service you make a decision for Jesus the next will be again will be 2016 don't enter 2016 on sale God bless you as you come there are still people God is speaking to outside make your way and receive this Prince of Peace he will change your life forever hallelujah I salute all of you who are coming the Prince of Peace the Prince of Peace is all you need in your life and a simple prayer of faith if you are coming please come and join them clear the way for them come and join them God bless you the devil is a liar don't let any devil stop you as I'm talking if the Holy Spirit is still speaking to you make your way I know time is up but you need to be saved make your way to the front in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the Prince of Peace listen he will bring beauty and glory out of your life it doesn't matter what you have done men can condemn you but let me tell you something the mercy of God that throne of grace and mercy is always there he will wipe your sins as if it never happened that's the mercy of God I'm going to lead you to a prayer and I want you to pray passionately from your heart you are not reciting a poem praise the Lord pray it from your heart you are talking to a real person his name is Jesus and as you pray that prayer a miracle will happen to you and you will leave here tonight having the greatest gift any man can have lift your right hand high above your head so that the devil doesn't think you are pretending and say after me Lord Jesus I believe in you I know you are the son of God and I believe I ask you tonight forgive my sins cleanse me from all unrighteousness 
I cry for your mercy I'm tired of living my life my own way this night I make up my mind before your people that you are the Lord of my life I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life let me pray for you father these hands that are lifted receive them and let this be the beginning of a real encounter in their lives I break the power of sin over your life and every voice that speaks judgment I declare that the throne of mercy silences that voice forever in the name of Jesus you stand before his presence as though you never sinned having the righteousness of his dear son Jesus Christ that's the gift he gives you for believing in him and I supply grace upon you to live the victorious Christian life this will not be an emotional decision for you to go back to the flesh from today you rise higher and higher never to go down again in the name of Jesus Christ I welcome you to the greatest family on earth God's own family in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now there is a lady waving her hands I like you to just walk up to her she'll have your details and will follow you up from the details so please make sure you supply your details God bless you celebrate them as they go celebrate them koinonia dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray Pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.